Good afternoon. Um, my name is Laurie Stevenson. I'm a postdoc in Jeff Wall's lab, lab at UCSF. Um, and today I'm going to be talking to you about recombination rate variation in great apes. And don't be surprised by the title change. I'm still going to talk plenty about gorillas and more. Um, <laughs> So um, a lot of people have given really cool backgrounds on recombination rate variation. So I'm just going to start out today by talking about what we know currently about recombination rate variation in primates. So here I'm showing an uh, overview of uh, phylogeny of uh, most primates. And I've got a black bar here to show um, the species of great apes that we know of. And I've circled in red the two species for which we have information about recombination rate variation that I'm going to walk you through. Um, so we've had several people talk about different recombination maps in humans. There's two major ones that have been built over the last decade. One is HapMap. Um, the HapMap project has been an LD-based map of recombination across the genome. This gives us a sexed average recombination rate, and it's a historical overview of recombination across the genome. The other map in humans is the decode map. This is a pedigree-based map, so it's an, a direct estimate of recombination across the genome. Um, this allows us to look at both sex average and sex specific crossover rates, and it's a contemporary map of the, the human genome. Um, additionally, more recent studies have given us a picture of other human populations besides Europeans, and these um, include the 1,000 genomes LD-based maps of recombination. So I'm not going to belabor the point too much, but I just want to give you a couple of findings that we have learned from um, human recombination, and one of which is that we know that recombination tends to be concentrated in these hot spots. Um, it is not evenly distributed across the genome. And so specifically, we find that about 80% of recombination tends to occur in only about 10 to 20% of the sequence. Um, some other cool, re really cool studies in sperm typing in humans, um, which have been shown in others' talks today, have shown that there's individual variation in the use of specific hotspots. So on the left, we can find that certain hotspots are used um, constitutively across different individuals, whereas other hotspots are used um, preferentially in certain individuals. And like we have done in other species, we have, or the field has looked at common genetic features that tend to correlate with uh, recombination rate variation in humans, um, specifically looking at sequence motifs. Uh, and that's how we've discovered uh, transcription factors such as PRDM9 that have been talked about today. Um, we have looked at correlations with diversity and divergence and GC content and how that um, correlates with GC bias gene conversion across the genome. As I mentioned earlier, some recent studies have given us a picture of within species variation on recombination in humans. Specifically, we have been able to show that um, for certain populations of humans, uh, we have, uh, we find that hotspots are less, or recombination is less uh, concentrated at hotspots, so it tends to be more evenly distributed across the genome specifically for populations such as the Yorubans in Africa. Um, we also find that for specific populations of humans, we find that there are unique hotspots that are not shared between different populations. Um, and this has been done for different studies uh, beyond the 1,000 Genomes Project as well. More recently, people have been interested in having some sort of between species comparison, reaching to um, do some analysis in chimps. Uh, some earlier studies in 2005 looked at specific segments of the genome. And more recently, we've been able to capture recombination rate variation along the entire genome with an LD-based recombination map. Um, and so we've gotten some really cool findings on how these uh, different systems tend to vary. You've seen this plot several times throughout this meeting, so I'm not going to uh, belabor the point, but what we can see is that there's no hotspot sharing. If we plot human hotspots on the left, we see an enrichment, of, or chimp hotspots on the left, we see an enrichment of recombination rate at those hotspots and not for humans in the black. We see the converse is true if we plot 
human recombination rate at human hotspots and chimp rate at the same regions. We can also look at how binning recombination at different scales, shown here at 10 kb and here at 5 kb, can give us uh, increasing correlation as we increase that bin size. And this is true for both between species for our human chimp comparison and within species for two different human populations. And finally, we can look at the distribution or evenness of recombination along the genome. And for chimps, they find that it tends to be more evenly distributed, very similar to the plots that I showed you earlier with these African populations from Yoruba. So that kind of concludes what we know right now about recombination rate variation in primates. Basically, we have some within species information for humans and one between species comparisons with chimpanzee. And I'd like to think that's where my work comes into play. Um, I've been involved in the Great Apes Genome Diversity Consortium. So this is a large collaborative effort between the labs of Evan Eichler and um, Tomas Marquez Bonet and different groups interested in patterns of demography, selection, and um, genetic diversity across the genome. And so we've been sequencing about 80 individuals of great apes from four different genera shown here, orangs, chimps, bonobos, and gorillas. And so for populations that have at least eight individuals from a given subpopulation, um, I would like to create a genetic map for each of these. And so here I'm plotting just the number of individuals from a specific subpopulation for three genetic maps that we'd like to build. And I should say that this work is being done in collaboration with Simon Myers Group at University of Oxford. Um, so this will give us an additional uh, between species comparison for gorilla and bonobo and a within species comparison for chimp, giving us uh, an additional population. So I'm going to just briefly walk over the pipeline that I've been using for building these maps. And this has come from uh, conversations with folks like Adam Otten and reading through the 100-page supplements of 1,000 Genomes and pan map papers. So it's still a work in progress, and I appreciate any comments that anyone has. Um, my timer has shut off. Okay. Uh, so basically, we take the reads shown here in red, and our collaborators align them the, to the non-human primate reference genome and the human genome, so we're aligning them to two different uh, genomes. Uh, our collaborators then do um, a lot of different filtering steps that I'm not going to go over today, but suffice it to say that they send me a VCF file that I then um, add in additional filters for things that we know. Um, might be important for them to study, but are not so interesting to us and can mess up our recombination analysis. Um, specifically, if we have high density of sites, um, uh, low allele frequency counts, um, Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, and a reciprocal liftover, which is very similar to a reciprocal laugh blast approach. Um, we take the intersection of SNPs from these two different call sets, we phase the data, and we impute missing data, and then we feed this into LD-hat to estimate recombination rates across the ge genome. Sorry. Um, we then do some post-filtering, and hopefully that gives us a nice final genetic map. So from here on out, I'm just going to talk about some preliminary data that I have in gorillas. I haven't done the other two uh, populations that I presented. Um, and so here's kind of the numbers that this pipeline represent. So for gorillas so far, um, we can map it to the non-human primate reference, or the gorilla genome, and the human genome. And these are the total number of SNPs that we get between those two mappings from our collaborators. And of course, you can see that there's more SNPs that map to the reference genome than the human genome. After we apply our first set of filters, we end up with two numbers that are roughly the same. We then apply um, a re an additional reciprocal liftover and get the intersection, and we're still left with a little over 60% of the data. I then feed this into LD-hat and get a rate estimation across the genome, 
And this is the additional filtering, which is not much. Um, and we get a mean rho per kb that's on par with our expectations. So you've seen plots like this earlier for humans. Um, so I'm just going to show gorillas, basically each chromosome in alternating colors. And you can see that generally the trends in humans are similar in gorillas in that we have an increase of recombination in the telomeric regions, um, as, as was seen in the, the plots that Adam showed earlier. But we're more interested in looking at these fine scale versus broad scale differences between chimp, human, and gorilla to kind of see what, what else we can learn from this new data. So specifically, we can look at hotspot sharing between species. I have not defined specific hotspots for gorillas yet, um, but I do have the uh, hotspots for human and chimp. Uh, and so here I've plotted the enrichment of human rates at human hotspots, and you see there's no enrichment of gorilla rates at these same regions, and the converse is true for chimp hotspots. We can also look at three different measures of broad scale comparisons between these different maps. Specifically, we can look at the evenness of recombination across the genome or how they're using their hotspots. Um, we can look at total map length and overall uh, average recombination. And we can look at these correlations at different scales of, recomb of uh, bin size. So if we look at this um, evenness of recombination across the genome, we see that uh, like similar to dogs, but not quite as extreme, uh, gorillas tend to pull closer to that diagonal that would be perfect evenness across the genome, suggesting that they are less concentrated recombination at hotspots. Despite this, if we look at total math length plotted here in Morgan's or average recombination on the left in Cinnamorgans per megabase, we find that gorillas have a higher average and higher total map length than both human and chimp, which are very similar to each other. And I'm just reminding you of the relationship between these species. And I should say that the um, conversion here from population estimates given by LD Hat to Cinnamorgans per megabase was ultimately done using an effective population size for Chimp, or for gorilla of 38,000. This is for the western lowland gorilla, and this data comes directly from um, the most recent gorilla genome paper. And so, of course, these differences could reflect over underestimates of this rate or other problems with our pipeline, and this is all still very preliminary. So finally, we can look at um, recombination binned in different scale sizes, again, from 10 kb to five megabases. And for reference, I've plotted that human versus chimp comparison from the PanMap paper. And we find that gorilla versus human um, has a very similar pattern and is very close to the human versus chimp line. Um, so this, this increasing correlation with uh, increasing bin size holds for gorillas as well. So of course, this is just one picture, and like I showed earlier, we'd really like to increase the number of comparisons by finishing the genetic maps for the Nigerian chimp population, for which we have data, and the Bonobo population. And that will allow us to look at, um, identify species-specific hotspots, and perhaps look at how um, PRDM9 and whether it co-occurs with predicted binding motifs, and is it explaining any of the variation in, in these other species, considering that this is a distinct difference between the human and chimp lineages. Um, we'd also like to look at other genetic elements that have been found to be commonly correlated with recombination rate variation and kind of the basic standard thing once you have a map. Um, so we're still building the map and we're very excited about what we will find. But of course, uh, no man is an island and neither are we. So I've been doing this uh, with my postdoc ad advisor, Jeff Wall, and Simon Myers group at University of Oxford. Um, and like I said, this is coming out of Tomas Marquez Bonet's lab and Evan Eichler's lab. Uh, we've had lots of people help with getting samples, sequencing, 
doing different analyses of selection, demography, and CNVs in this data set. So I think overall the project as a whole will be a very exciting one with some fruitful answers for our understanding of great ape genetic diversity and polymorphism. So with that, I'd like to take any questions.